2603. I'll take that. That's close enough. What's up YouTube? My name's Cricky. Welcome back to the channel. Um, I've been having some fun on Chuck this morning. Today is Friday. Yeah, Friday. <laughs> I don't know why I check. <laughs> um, but I've just been making up some spaces for the foot pegs. Because basically I need to get all that lot in. Either way, I need to get some foot pegs on there just so crispy can run it up on the dyno and he's got somewhere to put his feet. But you know, now's the ideal time to do it anyway, isn't it? So, um, the plan is quite a simple one. First thing, put the kettle on. Second thing, get cleaned up. <laughs> but all I've got here is, um, it's just a piece of bar. Let me show you. So a piece of bar, it's uh, 266 in length, both of them are, and they've both just got um, a M8 uh, hole drilled and tapped in each end. Um, the idea being is that I can stick this on there like that and bolt it in place, put the peg on the other end, so essentially they're held there and there, if that makes sense, and then I can offer this up as one unit, get it stuck on the bike. Um, I've already marked on the frame where I want the top of this to go, um, and then it's just a case of getting this bit level with the rest of the frame measure it all up, jobs are good and I can tack it in place and we're there. Um, so we're also going to need to put these tabs on obviously. All that little bolt onto there. I do need to chop these down a bit because I left them long so that'll be the next job. After a coffee. <laughs> right, I love having the whole days in here because I could get loads done. Um, yeah. If I could do this full time, I would. But I can't. Right, so what I want to do is, where, oh, hang on, where's that gone? Here we go. Right, so when I remake my footrest hanger, my rear sets, basically I want the, it's going to go on there somewhere. I have got a mark for the centre. It's going to go on something like that. But I want this top bit to run parallel with the bottom of the frame, just because I think it will look quite good. Obviously this will come down at a bit more of an angle. Um, but I think we'll be all right. I think we'll be okay. So, what am I going to do? What's I going to do? <laughs> oh yeah, right. So, um, we'll turn my angle finder jobby on. Come on, there we go. Stick him on the bottom there. And we'll just get a reference. So, whatever that angle is, it now considers it to be zero. There we go. Then we'll stick it on here. I'm calling that 65. Right. So, um, if I get my little angle finder jobby here, and one of these things. Right. So these are the little tabs. Obviously they've got to be cut down, they've been left long, and he needs to go on there. I just need to put a 65 degree angle on here, wherever I want it to be. So we have a template, I think this is 32, 30, something like that. 30. About like that. My radius isn't perfect, because it was done by hand. Uh, 
I'm just marking the other side of that circle if that makes sense. And then I'm going to want to leave a little bit of room for the weld to go down and it's got to be cut at a 65 degree angle. So, come on, um, 65 degrees is there. How much am I going to need for a weld? 5 mil. I would say this is 6 mil plate, so 5 mil seems reasonable. Um, and he's going to go on like that. So, really, I should have done that on the other side, shouldn't I? <laughs> oh, okay, right, okay, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to do it like that. Move this out, give myself about 5mm-ish, something like that. Stick a line, so that's how I'm going to chop it. This should end up centre tube, pretty much. Um, so I'll have that off there. Obviously it'll be flipped round, so... Um, where are we? I should have just done this the right way around, just doing it all cack handed. But this is just to give you an idea. And I can't be bothered to stop the video and do it again. So that's going to be chopped off there. He's going to get stuck on like that. So this bit runs parallel with that bit. And that way when I put my um, thingy on it and he sits on there, you basically won't see the tab. Yeah, um, so that's how that one's going to go. I need two chopping up like that, which is easy enough. Let's get that done. And then we can start bolting stuff together and see where we go from there. Where's my lid? I keep losing my lid. <laughs> right then. Probably going to get in the way doing this, but you know, tough. <laughs> so originally, I was going to have it like that. There's my mark. So my foot peg is in line with my mark. Ignore all this lot. All that's going to change. Um, and it was basically to get that one level with this one. I would have to change the angle of this bottom sort of brace to bring it in sort of down here. It would make the rear set. It's actually quite sort of skinny. Um, and because all this assembly is now lower down, I've still got an exhaust to come out here. So I'm thinking about changing it up a bit and running it like that. Um, yeah, like that. So my foot peg is still in line with my mark on the frame. But then this is parallel to the bottom of the frame rail. And I could make it such that this is parallel to that one. So it's all in line. Plus, it gives the impression that the whole rear set has been shifted up and a bit more aggressive. And it also clears all this lot down here for the exhaust to come out. So as long as he squeaks out here underneath the peg, then that will be happy as Larry. Um, this, this top one is going to be the, the, the same sort of size as this bottom tab. Um, so I'm going to need to... Mickey sum it up just so Crispy's got something to stamp all over when he's on the dyno. Uh, but that is what I'm thinking. Do you look better than that? Yeah, I think so. It just gives me more room. But the peg's in exactly the same place. Right, I'm doing that. I'm not leaving that one up to debate. That's my choice. <laughs> 
Right, let me do some measuring. Right, we could be onto something there. I quite like it because it makes it look like the rear set is properly up iron stuff, which gives it a bit more of a racy look. And it also frees up space underneath. So yeah, there's no worries about the exhaust getting through. But the foot peg stays in exactly the same place. So, you know, plus that bit and that bit, then follows the front. I'm just going to do it. That's what we're going to do. So, as you can probably tell from the shadows, it's getting on a little bit because I had some more visitors. So I've just been yapping and shooting the breeze and not getting on with stuff again. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this home with me, along with a set of calipers and my tab and all that stuff. I've done a quick sketch and took a picture of it as to dimensions and angles and stuff on the frame. Um, so I think I'm going to spend some quality time with Fusion 360 tonight and try and come up with a design for a replacement backplate, I think. Um, I've already caddied up the um, rear brake master cylinder, so you know, I, I can stick all that lot on and I think that'll all be good. Um, it's more a case of where it's going to sit in relation to, to this because I don't like you have a big peg and all that. So we are going to monkey about with it. But I've, got, I've already got the alley to do this. So if I can come up with a design, I'm back in here tomorrow and we could be making one, which I reckon is probably the way to go, if I'm honest. I think that'll work. Sounds like a plan to me. Right, I'll be back. I'm back. I'm back. Um, it is now just gone 11 on Saturday morning and today is already a good day because the van passed its MOT. Um, I still need to sort out that tyre because he is a bit skinny. Um, but it's all passed and it's all soiled, it's all taxed, it's all back on the road. Which means, as Ed said, I can come off the road and rest easy now. Because <laughs> I don't like that noise and it's not doing it any favours. So he's going to get laid up. We'll get to him when we get to him. I, don't, I might even project it, I don't know. Um, but the engine at some point will need to come out and get a complete tear down and see what's going on. That could be quite interesting actually, because we killed it on a dyno and I would love to see how we killed it on a dyno. <laughs> But the thing is, it's a really good engine. It makes loads of power, it's plenty enough. Um, and it could make quite a cool project bike, because it's kind of, it is a mile muncher. It's like you can sit on it all day and get off the other end quite happy. Um, but it's just when you get to the fun twisty bits, it's not exactly a sports bike. You know, that's not what it's designed for. So it might be getting changed. I don't know, I haven't decided yet. But if I do, that ain't gonna be happening for quite a while. Um, so yeah, I'm back in the van. Um, I got busy yesterday as well. Basically, I came up with this little lot. Um, I got busy with cab, let me show you. Right, ignore all my scribbles. This is the bit that you're interested in. Um, so that's gonna be my foot peg hanger or rear set or whatever it is you wanna call it. These are gonna be the two mounting points which have got, um, where's the, I can't find one that's cut off, but basically that is going to sit behind there, cut off at the relevant angle. So we've just got five mil gap between this and the frame. Um, these bits are going to be chopped out. So they're going to be slots that go through. I don't like these dips. They're just silly. I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> and this bit up here is where we're going to be having the um, rear brake master cylinder. Um, so mimic those mounting holes. He's just going to sit on like that. It will be set back a little bit. Um, you can see down here, it's sort of like half thickness and whatnot. Um, and then we'll have like a heel guard that mounts on here and kind of curves over the top of this, just so you're not scratching the bejesus out of it. <coughs> mounting hole, mounting hole, foot peg, which will be that bit. I'm probably gonna reuse these because I quite like them. I might change the end, I don't really know. Um, and then the lever, um, obviously where this sits, this sort of threaded bit down here, the connecting rod is long. We are going to be shortening that up. Um, the lever is going to be something like this, but a bit nicer. I might even adapt that one. I don't really know. <laughs> Haven't decided. Um, but you get the gist anyway. So that's what it's going to be. Um, put him on his packet so he don't get scratched. So, I've already got some alley. This is 10mm thick, same as those ones over there. 
two bits of that and I could basically machine these together because the, the gear shift side is going to be exactly the same um, and we'll have uh, another heel guard that comes off so it looks all the same as, as the brake side. Um, so we still need those mounting points, although I might skin that down a little bit. I don't know yet. Um, so I could basically machine these two together and save a load of time. So, get all this lot set up in Brian in the corner. And we can spend some quality time making a set of hangers, hey? Right. Right. For those of you that don't know, this is Brian. Named after the man who gave it to me. <laughs> that would be Doddy. Um... This is an Arsdale milling machine from 1943. It used to make breaches for tanks for the war effort. And that's what it was commissioned for actually, serial number 31. And he's mega, he's brilliant. Um, so I've been doing a few little jobs. I do need to top him up with oil, just cause I need to top him up with oil. <laughs> but we'll get that done and then we can get doing. All right, so I'm having to work straight off the bed on this one because I want to machine both of them together so they're both exactly the same. And these currently in the same size or anything else. But also that's too big to go into the vise. So I can clamp it down here and I can get an awful lot of this done. Um, essentially, what I'm, I'm using this point here where the foot peg goes as a datum point. Everything is measured from there. So I've got holes to drill for the, uh, for the foot peg, for the two mounting holes um, where it goes onto the frame. I've also got the two mounting holes for the um, brake master cylinder. And then for these slots, basically there's going to be a hole there, a hole there, a hole there, and a hole there. And then we'll slot out between them. So I could do this slot. I can't do that one because it's going to be in the wrong orientation. We're going to need to reset it and do that one. Um, should also be able to take off that and that. Um, do the outside radiuses for these brackets. Um, but then we are going to need to sort of clock it round and get it lined up with those two holes so I can do the rest of it. But it should be all right. Should be fine. Um, we can get an awful lot done here. Um, this is a really stupid way of doing it. Well, it's not a stupid way. To me, it makes sense. But I'm quite a tactile person. If I've got it in my hands and I can look at it and see where I want it and all that sort of stuff, it just makes sense. A proper tool maker or something would just go, oh yeah, one of them, bish, bash, bosh, and you just have it done. Whereas I can put this on top and I can position everything so I'm clear of all my holes and I'm not going to be drilling into my three, two, one blocks or anything else. And then whatever I'm using as a datum, I just center pop it so I know that's my starting point. And everything else, we just run off X and Y. Jobs are good and we should be in. Right, um, I need another brew and then we'll crack on. Right, so he's all good. Um, I have had my do little cutout thing that I had on here. I've stuck it up on the bike just to see what it looks like. And I reckon it's gonna look all right actually. So, um, where we've had that little template on here, I've centre popped what is going to be my datum for everything else. So we just zero all that lot, don't matter about Z, and then we'll go to incremental and make sure all that's zeroed. And I'm just going to be working in incremental from this point on. That way, if I do get lost or something, or whatever, I can just go back to absolute and I'll know where I am. So he's all sweet. Um, and now all I'm going to do is go around and start drilling holes in it. Starting out with all the holes first, just because it makes sense. Everything's all clamped together, so they should be exactly the same, which is fine. I know all my radiuses, because I've got it here. So what size drill to shove through it? And looking at it, I do think we're going to clear my three, two, one blocks, because I really don't want to put holes in them. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, I did have a brew. I need my brew. There we go. Ugh, it's got a map of Africa on top. <laughs> I chopped up the one with all my dimensions on it. <laughs> I need this to know where to drill all my holes. So I'm having to tape it back together again and it'll get stuck up there with the rest of them. <laughs>
just broke my centre drill. He's in that hole. So I've had to switch this one round. I just want to make sure that nothing has moved now. Because, you know, you don't know if it's if it has or not. So we'll go back to zero, zero. Um, come on. This should put me back on that first hole that I did, if nothing has shifted. Zero, zero. Which it does. Happy days. Right. It's been a little while since that last clip was filmed. I've had a clean up look and I've had a brew and I've had a calm down. <laughs> Partly because um, the battery on the phone went flat, so I didn't capture the rest of it. But also, the air in here went blue, like properly blue. Um, my mum would not be pleased she heard me talking like that. So, what have I done today? Well, I drilled an awful lot of holes in a very specific place on two bits of metal like this, all apart from one. And it's that one there. He should be up here. <laughs> Put the bloody thing in the wrong place. I can't believe it. All these holes and stuff, they're for the, obviously the mounting holes, the, the foot peg hole, the start and end point of where the slots is gonna be and all that sort of like the radius that leads up to the, the bracket bit that holds the, the, the master cylinder. So there's quite a lot of holes to go in proper places and stuff. And the trouble that I've got is, um, one is I cut up my template. <laughs> so I had to tape it all back together again, but I've got an awful lot of dimensions very tightly packed onto the one drawing and all the reference lines that show where they go to and all this, that and the other. Um, they're all quite sort of close and confusing. So I split it out to one sheet for X and one sheet for Y. I thought that would work, that would be a treat. <laughs> It don't work out quite that way either. One of the things to be, if you're using Fusion 360 for all this lot, um, you give it a datum point and then you take a measurement from there and that's where you put your dimension. So if that's your, if that's your datum and you've got something, oh, let's say 5.14 mil this side of it, you just get a line with 5.14. If you've got another one this side of it, it will just say 5.14. Trouble is, I've gotten into the habit of using plus and minus, so I know which side I am of the datum. And one of them should be a minus 5.14, and I didn't do it that way. I did it as plus, so I put a hole in the wrong place. And annoyingly, it's right through the middle of the bracket. Like, right through, it's not on a bit that's gonna be waste and get chomped off later on. It's gonna end up where it needs to be. So, you know, the air went blue, I had a bit of a rant, I've had a cup, cup of coffee and a calm down, but now I need to get two more, two more bits of alley and have another go. Today is Saturday, I ain't gonna get them today, so that's gonna have to wait until Monday. It's, oh, and the annoying thing is, right, 
I only had one more hole to put in the bugger. One more hole. And I, I goosed it up at that point. That said, my holes are lovely. <laughs> There's no chattering or anything. I took to using um, the collet. D just, I don't know, I always get nice results with the collet over that, um, you know, the, the chuck. Like, you know, the hand tightened chuck thing where you don't have a key. Um, the chuck does it all right, and you can switch tooling out like dead quick and easy, but these are all the same hole size apart from two of them, so I'm just using the collet. And I'll be using it again next week when I have another go at doing my foot pegs <laughs> and getting them stuck on the bike. Um, so, the time is early. It's quarter past three, but I'm going to call it a day here because I'm in no mood to do machining now because I'm a bit miffed. And you shouldn't do machining when you're a bit miffed. And you certainly shouldn't rush it like what I was. Um, as part of the trouble with YouTube is you set yourself a task and it's like, right, I'm going to get it done and I'm going to get it done today. So I also just ended up rushing and that's how come I cocked up, I think. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> but it's done now and there's not a lot I can do about it. So I'm going to go home and put this video together. Then I'm going to upload it all so you can have a damn good laugh. It's, it's been like a good day for the van and it's been a bad day because of that. So a day of mixed emotions we could call it. <laughs> and on that note, that is definitely where I'm going to leave it. So anyway, thank you ever so much for watching. I'm sorry I didn't get that done. <laughs> Do hope you're well and stay safe and we'll see you on the next one. Laters! <laughs>